The fight against fascism creates some unlikely alliances, Churchill and Stalin, moderates and socialists, even the ghosts of Democrats and never Trump Republicans. Good job, guys. Uh, here to talk more about that is former RNC chairman and former lieutenant governor of Maryland and senior advisor to the Lincoln Project, Michael Steele. Welcome, Michael. Nice to see you again. Hey, it's good to see you too, man. I'm doing all right. Yeah. Doing all right. You're looking good, man. I like this look you got going there. It's, you know, uh, I got to show a little color. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it shows that senior advisor kind of look is coming there. Well, that's what the, this is what senior advisors do. It man. looks good. Now, this has been a crazy week, Michael. I want to know what happened to your boy, man. Oh, my, my boy won. What you <laughs> no, but Michael, you're a Republican. What happened? <laughs> no, I'm an American. We work our way to Republican. <laughs> right. And you're a lifelong Republican, or at least I know, at least professionally, that's for sure. But you've talked about your yeah. experiences and your parents and how much that's affected you and shaped your values. You're not like a party-come-lately type of person. You know, you no. really... That's in your bones. But is part of you disappointed with the Republican Party, not just Trump? You know, he got more votes than he got in 2016. Like, how does that make you feel as a person who's kind of lived for this party for a long time? Well, it, it's, it's very disappointing. It is particularly disappointing when I see members of my uh, party's leadership uh -huh. sycophantically kowtow to a sort of egomaniacal uh, you know, henchman who who has one one view of the world, and that's himself. There's no one. I don't want to be in a you know full on battle with my own party. Right. You know, but w you, you got to deal with stupid. Right. And 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 so hey, here we are, and we're going to try to and, you know, as I said the other day, what the party is going to need um, when this is all said uh -huh. and done is a political enema, uh, and ah. I'm happy to deliver. <laughs> right. Yes, I haven't quite <laughs> heard it put that way. Well, what is the well, what? Tell me, what is the evil plan of the Lincoln Project now? Because you guys put a lot of energy <laughs> into getting Biden elected, but now do you turn against him? And and I mean, we're going to have a divided government. It looks like is the goal yeah. now to weaken Biden and get your the Republican that you want next time? Don't you fucking lie to me, Michael. Tell me the truth no. now. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> not, not at all, not at all. Uh, no, it is It is about standing for democratic principles uh -huh. and ideals. Uh -huh. You know, if a Democrat like Joe Biden uh, and uh, Kamala Harris are willing to carry that banner, Let's charge ahead. And as I said to the vice president, soon to be president-elect, that uh, yeah, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight you on some of the stuff that you got hidden in the cupboard over there when uh -huh. you pull it out and try to do it. It's healthy. It's healthy to have a debate around uh, health care and environmental right. policies and and you know questions of war and peace. What is not healthy when we debate who we are as citizens, uh -huh. when we debate who we are as Americans. And when you say who you are, I know you mean that from an American perspective, but from a Republican perspective, do you mean to go back uh -huh. to the pre-Tangerine uh, Idi Amin days, you know, uh, <laughs> of the Republican Party? Or do you accept the fact that this is a Trump party now? And maybe yeah. you guys, maybe you're the ones that aren't listening and are on the outs. Do you think there is a space for you guys after this, you're gonna be welcome back to the to the GOP cookout. <laughs> you know, oh no, we're not, we ain't that. getting any patients to the cookout anytime yeah. soon. Because no, that other man, cookout is even... already gonna be problematic getting to the other cookout. Well, this is true. <laughs> this is true. Well, this is the same crew that didn't even invite me to the convention in 2012. I don't know. And I just left off. They just fired me. So yeah, I know yeah. they ain't invite me to anything anytime soon. Right. So where are you? Where does that put you? That's still as a Republican. They got to deal with me, baby. I ain't going nowhere until I decide to go somewhere. Uh -huh. And that's how this works. I've been here since 1976. When did you show up? Uh -huh. And that's, and you know, these folks haven't walked in my shoes right. growing up in D.C. And, and, and trying to create a political, uh, you know, two-party system in a state like Maryland where we're outnumbered two to one, uh -huh. Democrat to Republican. So, you know, I, I've, I've got the scars and the wounds. I've yeah. carried the flag. Um, and, you know, tried very hard to to bring a message that the party, at least on paper, believed in. Uh -huh. um, and so there are many of us who want to try to make it real. And if we don't make it in, you know, the Trump faction consume the party completely, right. which, you know, infrastructure and all. OK, there, there's, there's a big country and there's a lot of space. The ideas don't die. die. The values don't go away. 
the principles are still real and you make that case. Yeah. And if you make the case in another political form, then you do. But then at least initially, you know, I, I call myself a Motel 6 Republican. Mm. You know, someone's got to keep the lights on and we're going to try our best to do that. Yeah. And to the extent that the light gets extinguished, don't worry, I got a backup. Yeah, I'm very suspect of the towels in that motel, though, I'll have to say. Uh, I mean, After the last four years, so am I. As Grouch would say, leave and never darken my towels again. You know? uh, and let me ask you this finally, Michael. I appreciate you being here this week. And as a black man, as a Republican, you know, like with, with Trump out of the way as a distraction, how do you talk to black people as a Republican knowing that it doesn't feel like conservatives are into this racial reckoning that's going on now, that they don't understand this issue. LGBTQ, you know, issues mm -hmm. also seem to be dismissed as, you know, victimizing and all these types of things. How do you, as a black man who, who knows the realities of our place in America, you're not, right. you know, you're not ignorant of that, you just come at it from a different point of view. How do you open up that part of the, of, of the tent for people who you know probably want to be there with you, but can't do it for those reasons? Well, it, it, it actually, before I go out and talk to the people outside my tent, I have to talk to the people inside my tent. Right. And they have to appreciate uh, what I bring to that conversation. Mm -hmm. It was a big issue when I was chairman. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember having many conversations after, you know, in some meetings and they would present this stuff and we'd like you to go out and say this and do this. And I look at them and go, you realize I'm black, right? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 can't, I can't say that. <laughs> what, what the hell? Let me tell you what. Let me tell you what the black man in me just heard. Uh -huh. Okay. So, and that's, and again, a very good example is Law and Order. Uh -huh. Now, you know, people take the reaction of African Americans to that as, like, oh, you're against Law and Order. No, we're not against Law and Order. In fact, we we firmly believe in Law and Order because we know we need it in our communities. Right. But let me tell you what I hear when you say it the way you say it, because what you're meaning by law and order is not what I'm feeling. Uh -huh. So that's where you got to start with that. And then when I get outside the tent, I just got to be honest about that. You know, I bring I bring my experience as a black man uh -huh. everywhere I go. I can't escape that inside my community, outside my community, no matter where I am. So I've got to be true to that first. And I can't be just because I'm a Republican and I'm in the room with a whole bunch of white folks, start acting like white folks uh -huh. and start sounding like white folks. Then I become inauthentic to my own uh -huh. and they don't want to hear from me. Right. And they don't care about what I have to say, because then I'm just another I'm just another Republican uh -huh. in a room full of Republicans. I thought you were going to say something else there. But the I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just call it. The, <laughs> let's just say, let's stay away from the platinum plan for now. <laughs> How about that? Uh, but thank you, Anna. We appreciate you being a voice there. Keep doing what you're doing, Michael.